Alrighty guys, so here we are with this Toshiba Satellite C15-A-1EM But the tutorial is gonna work for pretty much every Toshiba Satellite series Up from the first Intel generation all the way through the fourth one To make it go faster, we will do three things Upgrade the CPU, now this one has an i3 3110M And we are swapping to an i5 uh, which I don't really remember the code for but later on we will see it it should be like a 3520M and then we are adding another 4 gigs of RAM bringing it to 8 now you can choose so if you have already 8 gigs of RAM you can put 16 but they're not really needed you can put 8 just by adding one and you will also gain in performance thanks to dual channel so I actually recommend it now you will need some internal paste to um, actually replace the one in there once you swap the CPU and then you just need a screwdriver and an SSD of course to swap out the old hardware this so let's go straight into it so guys this laptop is not working now aside from the broken screen and windows not, not activated like i've been trying to open like cpu-z for 10 minutes and like it's so bugged out but today we're gonna fix it by swapping the cpu here i have some ram here i have somebody here i have some tunnel paste here i have the new CPU guys now. Oh wow, it opens. So it has an i3-3310. This CPU, which has pins on the back side, is actually an Intel CPU and it's like an i5. So we're gonna slap in the laptop and hopefully fix this thing. So let's get straight into it. So this is the before test. Really not that impressive. So first of all, we take out the battery. Then you have to take out this first panel now here. If you only wanted to upgrade the SSD and the RAM, you could simply do it here, because it's extremely simple. You just pull this guy up, you have a single screw holding it. And now here, you can just add your RAM. As you can see, there is a smaller side and a bigger side, so you just take the RAM, put it there, and then you press it, so till it clicks. And now boom, 8 gigs of RAM. Now for the SSD, just take out the whole hard drive, single screw holding it, pull it slightly back and then on top. And then here you have it. You can repurpose this thing and put it on the new SSD if you want it to be able to slot in, or you can just put the SSD here. It's gonna work even without this. I would recommend doing it if you want to, it's a bit easier. Okay, so now while taking the hard drive out, we can actually get to the CPU again if you want to and now you just have to take out every screw you see here be sure not to lose track of where they are it can be a bit tricky by the way guys it's also recommended if you're upgrading the cpu you should take out the cmos battery because by doing this uh, you will reset the bios but it's not needed okay you don't have to just if you want to take out the battery and it's gonna sometimes make it easier for the PC to boot back on once you've actually done the swap. Me personally, I won't be doing it this time just because I'm lazy and again, it's not really needed. But again, sometimes you might have to do it. Say you turn on the PC and it's not really turning on, try that, it might get to work again. Okay, we took it out because uh, basically my girlfriend was being a bit annoying. She was like, ah, oh, man, if you're gonna burn this PC by not taking it out, I'm gonna kill you, so. Oh yeah, censor the word kill because YouTube is gonna demonetize us, but anyway. No battery, okay, we're doing it. <laughs> Condom less or all. You have to transfer this one too. At this point, there are a couple more hidden screws like this one. And now it's pretty much free. You just have to wait. You should be able to pull out the drive. This is the first step, pull out the CD drive. And now you have to use something to actually go and get rid of the virginity of the computer. You wanna completely go under it until you can flip it easily, okay? It's gonna get us demonetized. You gotta censor this one as well. So you can choose where to start. So you can go the easy route or the masochist route. Now, me personally, I like to start from an angle. So I think it's a bit easier. But again, it's very personal. Again, we have already put the thing inside of this laptop for the first time. So now it's a bit more loose, you know? A tight feeling anymore so you can just open it up as you want so i will just do it barehanded because that, that's how i like it you know you, you can use gloves if you're worried of getting an infection or something i don't and uh, yeah you just keep prying until the whole thing comes out again you can help yourself using a blue stick that's something you can do Now, if while you're pulling it up, you feel a bit of resistance, it may be because the laptop is not really complying, 
or it might be because you forgot a screw just isolate where that is and like it means you forgot a screw so go take the screw out we just need to get rid of this side it's not coming which means we probably have to take out the keyboard first that's something that very often happens so it's the same with this laptop it's not the same with every laptop but remember to take out the keyboard first you want to just go pry under here until you can lift it up as you can see so you want to take out the keyboard by lifting this thing up and then you want to take out all these screws Now you're finally able to take off the back cover. Now again, we're pretty lucky to actually take out the CPU. It's fairly simple. You just have one, two, three, four, five, six screws and nothing more. Take out these ones from the cooling department first. Disconnect the fan. Take out the four screws from the socket. And then you wanna just lift it up. Now this one has fresh paste because we repasted it not very long ago, but the yard is gonna be dry. So now we're gonna use some alcohol wipes to clean them out and then actually swap the CPU. But first, I wanna show you how to actually take out the CPU. Get a flat headed screwdriver, turn it. Now you can just take it out. Then you grab the new CPU, you just put it back in. And then you just close this guy. And this is it. Okay, now here we are applying the paste. Again, it's a die, so you want to have it fully covered. Now, I don't know how much I can, you can see, I and mean, I apologize for the camera angle. You just want to apply it properly. Again, not too little. You can put a bit too much if you want, so it's not going to be a problem. It's not going to hurt the performance. And then you just have to basically screw it back in, but be sure to actually apply it evenly, because if the pressure is not even at the beginning, it might do damage. So you want to just place the fan back. Oh, by the way, clean the fan while you're at it. I was saying, you want to just place the fan back where it was. Take Exactly, then plug this thing back and then you want to put the screws back in. Now don't screw them all the way, you want to go X-wise and be pretty gentle with them because we are dealing with a die, it's fairly easy to break it actually. So once they're all in, before tighten them, put the screws back in on the cooler and tighten them all the way. At this point, still going X-wise, you can actually tighten the screws all the way. Perfect, at this point you just have to put it back together. First thing I like to do is put the cover back on. Then you want to flip it and actually put those screws first. Then you want to just put the keyboard back and then screw all the screws in the back side. And for the keyboard it's fairly simple, just lift this thing up, align it properly. Then once it's pushed in, just close it and then you want to put it first from the top and then just press it down. If it stays up a little bit, you might have to put some duct tape behind it. It's a common problem, but it should be good to go usually. Also, don't uh, uh, stress because you still have to put on the keyboard screw, so. Now, as for the SSD, we still haven't got it, so we will put it in a second uh, moment. But basically, you just wanna slot it in. Again, it's, it has the same connector as the hard drive, so you just wanna slot it here. And then you wanna screw this one back right here. And then you just wanna close the cover, press it hard, no worries, and then just screw this one in. Put the battery back in, lock the battery, and then you can just turn the PC on it. Alrighty guys, now here we are updating the BIOS as well on Windows 11. Also, we did the, the inspector to disable the Spectrum meltdown protection that gave us a bit more uh, performance. Apparently, got the wrong BIOS, so uh, I will find the right BIOS and do this. Alrighty guys, so here we are after all the upgrades. Now, sorry for the low light, but as you can see, we've, we got an i5 in there successfully. Now, I'm gonna just quickly uh, run a CPU-Z test for you. And yeah, it's going like slightly faster. Of course, this i5 is still like two core four threads it's not like a proper i5 and it's the lowest end i5 ever but like the, the performance increase is definitely there especially in the single core so it's nice and like for our upgrade we had a budget of like 50 bucks and we did like ssd ram and cpu for 50 bucks so that's really nice actually we basically got the laptop to be working as new for 50 bucks now we'll just quickly show you the temperature uh, the screen is slightly broken so don't mind it but as you can see in idle it's doing really well here we have our ssd i will just stress it and this is a low-level stress test but again it's a laptop with an i5 so it's not gonna really get much worse than that and as you can see the temperature is handling pretty well so that's nice now i will also show you just for the lols a prime 95 
have stress test, which you should know is really hard on the CPU. And as you can see, even with this one, it really handles it well and the frequency doesn't really drop. So that's nice, guys. That's nice. I will also show you just, again, for the logs of it, small FFT test. But like, as you can see, the PC is just really snappy. Like I can open stuff in a second, as you can see. And that's thanks to the SSD. So you can really get these laptops to be working as good as new if you want to. Now, again, let me quickly get the small FFT test. Here we go. Now this stressed it a bit more, but even with this one, it doesn't reach throttle levels. And this is really unrealistic for this kind of laptop. This is it, you can definitely bring those laptops to life again, and they really have much more to give. So see you in the next one, guys. Bye.